Now, to start off, liberate yourself by thinking of money from a purely functional point of view rather than a religious point of view. And by the way, when I say the religion of money, I think you know what you what, what I mean. There's this sense, uh, in, it, it, it's felt by so many people in the world that, you know, they... Uh, money has this mysterious kind of powerful thing. They think they feel like less than the money like they have to Really struggle to earn it and, and they don't know how to make it. They don't really know where to start they, They've tried everything and nothing seems to work and and then they there's this it's almost like a sense of worship of money Some people even kill for it. That's what I mean when I say religious point of view of money, okay? Um, because a religion is just any sort of cult shrouded mysterious Thing that people follow you know so it doesn't have to be like an official religion like Christianity or Islam or or whatever even money can be a religion science can be a religion you know that idea that everything must fit this box and I don't know what this box is but everything must fit into it that's a religion you know anyway so instead of thinking of money I would like us to start thinking of M O E U O A S O V let's see what that means MOE simply means medium of exchange, okay? Now, the medium of exchange, to understand this, this is actually the simplest part of this video, uh, so I thought we'd start here. The, the To understand this, one needs to un understand something called the coincidence of wants, or rather the problem of the coincidence of wants. The coincidence of wants is the situation where the supplier of a good or service, you know, um, service A, wants a good or service B and the supply of a good or service B wants good or service A at the same time in the same quantity if this happens this is called the coincidence of wants in other words if I want what you have and you want what I have and that could be good services knowledge information whatever and we both want it at the same time in the same quantity in the same location then we have achieved coincidence of wants unfortunately that rarely happens okay and usually that's because of timing and quantity constraints okay like you know you may want what I have but not now maybe in two years or I may want what you have but I want double what you have or I want half of what you have you know so you know that kind of thing makes it difficult to just barter trade to to and that's why barter trade kind of isn't you know really cool it's not that it's bad, it's just that it suffers from the problem of the coincidence of wants, okay? And therefore, for, for, for exchange to work, we need a medium of exchange, okay? Literally, um, a medium of exchange is an intermediary instrument, something in between, something we don't really want, but helps us exchange what we do really want, or rather we do really desire. So I might desire what you have, and you might desire what I have, but then we go through a middle thing, maybe a piece of paper with numbers. So it's not really what we wanted, but it helps us get what we really wanted. You see what I mean? Yeah. So it is an intermediary used to facilitate a trade and to avoid the inconveniences of the lack of a coincidence of wants. Now, here's a problem. We are accustomed to having bank currencies as the only medium of exchange that we use. But in reality, there are many, many, many other instruments that can, be, that can be used as MOEs. And we'll get to that much later in this video. I just want to set the stage up for now. Now, the second functional aspect of what we have come to call money in popular language is what we call a unit of account, UOA. A UOA is anything, again, that word, anything that allows us to do three things. To value transactions, which means to allow uh, allows us to compare different goods and services using one common standard of value. So this way you can even compare, let's say, like a cow to a mobile phone to uh, a table or a, or a desk or a computer or, or a vacation in terms of dollars. You see, so that kind of that it's, it's 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 a very tiny thing but it's important for commerce <laughs> again anything that allows us to also keep accounts in others to keep debit and ledger uh, and sorry debit and credit records um which is usually called a ledger anything that allows us to keep a ledger of transactions you know or you know debit and credits that's also a unit of account and anything that allows us to make calculations 
either on the ledger or the value of the goods and services themselves. Again, that's a unit of account. Anything that can do that. The third function of what we have come to call money is something called store value. A store value is anything that can be saved, retrieved, and exchanged at a later time. Anything! You know, so to qualify as an SOV, it has to be predictably useful when retrieved, okay? It, it, it has to retain that purchasing power so that it doesn't lose value uh, or, or maybe doesn't lose all that much value. So that you know, okay, if I put this in storage for five years and I come back and get it after five years, I can still use it. It will still have retained most if not all its value if it's a very good sov it will actually have appreciated if it's a poor sov it will have depreciated but nevertheless it stores value okay so um things that lose value include the way you know how, think about some what what think about things that don't qualify as a storage of value those are things that either become lose value by extinction for example if you have a loaf of bread it's very good you can eat the loaf of bread but it's gonna rot after a week or after a few days so that's not a good way to store value but gold doesn't rot okay um, things that get burnt water damage or things that people lose confidence in or you know uh, or you know things that can be overprinted uh, forged um, you know <laughs> and sometimes that include includes official currencies because you know we all know they get overprinted every now and then and that's what breaks them so the best example of an sov is gold now other examples include real estate or property uh, houses and land um, currencies silver gold of course we say that art um, and, and other things, you know, to one extent or the other, some are not good, as good as the others, you know. But that's what an SOV is. Now, here's a point. If you can establish the attributes of MOE, UOA, and SOV on any instrument, you're home free. Simply break down the word money into its constituents, MOE, UOA, and SOV, and that begins to free your mind from old li limiting conditioning around abundance. What does that mean? People think abundance equals having an accumulation of US dollars. Can it be? Yes, that could include abundance. But abundance is so much more than that, you see? And then, secondly, you don't have to get your MOE, UOAs, and SOVs from any one particular instrument. You're not stuck to having to earn currency, you know? You don't have to earn Kenya shillings or euros or dollars. I mean, if you can, that's great, but you can do that and other things, or you can do other things and then exchange those other things for dollars if and when you need them, you see? So I'm just expanding your mind around this because we wanna to get to the point of the um, greatest opportunities and the revolution that are, uh, that is coming up. You first need to understand these foundations. So anyways, there is more to this. Now let's keep going. We're still building up to the, the foundations and then we'll get to the point very soon.